Chapter 6, Section 1, Review. This will be review for your test tomorrow, so make sure you study. All right. First example we're going to start off with, I'm going to look at it, and I notice that there is nothing outside of the parentheses in order to distribute into the parentheses, so everything is just multiplication. All right, and if you remember the trick that I told you before, if I look, this is 4 and this is 16. 16 can be written as a perfect square with a base of 4. So I'm going to bring my negative out, and then I have 4 to the negative 3, 4 squared, which is 16. My negative is out front. And then I have my a, which is a to the negative 2, a to the negative 5th. And when we're multiplying, we just add the exponents. So I have a to the negative 2 plus negative 5. And then my b, b to the negative 1 plus negative 4. So simplify that. This one, I have my negative still up front. So I have negative, and then for this one, I'm going to go ahead and add the exponent. So that's 4 to the negative 3 plus 2. This one is a to the negative 7th, and this one is b to the negative 5th. Go ahead and add that one. So I have negative 4 to the negative 1, a to the negative 7th, b to the negative 5th. And then if you remember, to get rid of negative exponents, you just have to move them either to the denominator if they're in the numerator, or to the numerator if they're in the denominator. And these are all in the numerator. Okay, so I have negative, and then since I have nothing left in the numerator, it's just 1, and then I have 4, a to the 7, b to the 5th. The next one. Now, since I have something outside of the parentheses, I have to go ahead and distribute what is outside into each part. A common mistake is that students forget to distribute it to the actual numbers. So this is 7 to the negative 2, and then when I distribute it to this one, a power to a power, we always want to multiply the exponents. So this is u to the negative 4 times negative 2, which is u to the positive 8. And then I have v to the 12 times negative 2, which is v to the negative 24. And I also have to distribute all of that to the bottom. So I have 8 to the negative 2 u negative times a negative is a positive, so I have u to the 36, and then v to the negative 2. <laughs> Excuse me. So now for the 7 and 8, I'm just going to flip them, since I have a negative exponent, so it becomes 8 squared on the top and 7 squared on the bottom. And then when you're dividing bases that are the same, we subtract the exponents. So this is just u to the 8 minus 36, and then I have v to the <coughs> negative 24 minus negative 2. <coughs> Excuse me. So now, 8 squared is 64. u to the negative 28. v to the negative 22 over 49. And then you're just going to move your negative exponents to the denominator, since they're already in the numerator. So I have 64 left on top, and on the bottom I have 49 u to the 28th, v to the 22. And that's it. All right, for this one, in order to do this one in my head, I go ahead and change the decimal to a uh, fraction. But you can do this one in your calculator, okay? If you know how to do that. If you don't, make sure you ask. Okay, so I have the fourth root of, and then this is 81 over tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. So 81 over 10,000. So what's the fourth root of 81 and the fourth root of 10,000? It's just three tenths. Okay, in your calculator you're going to get 0 0.3, which is also three tenths. For this one, the fifth root of 1 over the fifth root of 243. Well, the fifth root of 1 is just 1, and the fifth root of 243, let me think about it for a minute, is 3, and so it's 1 third. All right, for this one, now you can either simplify inside if possible, but this one's not possible. And I'm going to end up having a radical in the denominator, or a square root in the denominator, which I can't have, so I'm going to have to rationalize this one. But I like to simplify it before I rationalize, 
It's just a fewer steps. So I'm going to simplify it first, and then I'm going to rationalize the denominator. So for me, this becomes the square root of 9 over the square root of 10x cubed. All right, well, the square root of 9 is 3. Okay, and the square root of 10x cubed, the only one that can be simplified, 10, there's no perfect square inside of 10, but there is inside of x squared. So I have the square root of 10 and the square root of x squared times x. All right, and now when I simplify this, I can take out this x and put it in front, and then I still have a 10 and an x inside the radical in the denominator and a 3 on top. So now that I have it simplified, I need to rationalize the denominator and get rid of my radical. So I have to go ahead and multiply by 1 and then manipulate that 1 to be 10x, square root of 10x over the square root of 10x because that's going to give me the square root of 10x squared on the in the denominator. So the top is still 3 and the bottom is x times the square root of 10x. And now when I multiply the top numerator and denominator, I'm left on the top with 3 square roots of 10x and on the bottom, I'm left with x square roots of 10x squared. And then if you remember, the square root of 10x squared cancels out, so I'm just left with 10x times x. 10 times x times x. Because the square root and the square root cancel out, so I just have 3 square roots of 10x over 10x times x is x squared. Okay, so here's a different type of problem, and here's where you have to recognize if you need to rationalize or not. And that's why I always simplify first, because then if I don't need to rationalize, I don't have to. So if you look at this, I can change this to the fifth root of 96x to the ninth over 3x squared, which gives me the fifth root, 96 divided by 3 is 32. And then x to the ninth over x squared is just x to the 9 minus 2, which is x to the 7. So I'm left with the fifth root of 32, x to the 7th. And if you look, now I don't have a denominator, I don't have to rationalize. So you need to recognize, or if you simplify first, you can recognize if you actually even have to rationalize or not. So the fifth root of 32, and then make sure we know how to write this out. So I have the fifth root of x to the 7th, I have 1x to the 5th in there, but then I have 2 left over. I don't have enough to make a power to a power, which would be x to the 10th, because I only have 7. So it's x to the 5th times x squared. The 5th root of 32 is 2. You can use a calculator if you're not sure. And then remember, I'm going to cancel out this one and take out this x. The 5th root of x to the 5th is just x. And then I still have this one left on the inside, so I have to rewrite that and I can't simplify that any further. Okay, even root odd exponent, when you're done, if you need absolute values. I don't, I have an odd root, so I don't have to worry about absolute values. All right, next one, same deal. This one doesn't have a denominator, so I don't have to worry about rationalizing. So I have the cube root of 343. And then I'm gonna rewrite this one. Since I have six, I have enough to rewrite it like this. Okay, which is nice because then I don't have to worry about writing an extra one on the side. And this one goes the same. So I have the cube root of y, and then if I have a cube on the outside, what goes on the inside? 7. That gives me y to the 21st. And the reason I do that is so that I can cancel out the cube root and the cube. The cube root of 343 is 7. 7 times 7 times 7. The cube root of x squared cubed, this is going to cancel with this, and I'm left with just an x squared. Okay? This one canceled, this one canceled, and I'm left with a y to the seventh. Even root, no nope, odd root, so I don't have to worry about absolute values. Remember, even root, odd exponent. Well, I have an odd root, so absolute values are unnecessary. All right, same deal. Let's go ahead and simplify. So I have the fourth root of 16. I have the fourth root of x, and I want fourth on the outside since it's a fourth root, and then what goes on the inside? Cubed. Okay, that gives me 12, and this one is not a multiple of 4. 18 is not a multiple of 4. So what do I need to do for this one? Well, I have to put as many in as I can, which would be y to the fourth, to the fourth again, which is 16 of them, but I still need two more. So I'm just going to multiply by y squared, 
and that gives me 18 y's. That way I can at least cancel out as many as I can, and then I'm still going to have some underneath my fourth root. So now go ahead and find the fourth root. This one is going to be 2. Fourth root of 16 is 2. Cancels, cancels, and I'm just left with x cubed. This one's going to cancel, but I still have a y squared underneath. So the y to the fourth comes out, but I have a fourth root of y squared on the inside, so I have to leave it there because I can't cancel anything out. It has to stay underneath. When I'm done, I'm done simplifying, I look, even root, oh, I do have an even root. Do I have any odd exponents? I do. x cubed. This cannot be a negative because we're finding the fourth root, so I need to go ahead and put absolute values around it. Okay? If you miss an absolute value, I will mark a small amount off, like half off. All right, for this one, we do have to rationalize the denominator by using the conjugate. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, if you look at this one, I'm going to have to multiply by the conjugate over the conjugate because I have a binomial, which just means I have two terms. So I'm going to multiply by 1, but then it's going to be the conjugate over the conjugate. And the conjugate is just the same thing as the bottom, except I'm going to switch the middle to a negative. So I have the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2. All right. And I'm going to have to FOIL the top, and on the bottom I only have to multiply the, or the first and the last. So FOIL the top, so I'm going to have 3 times the square root of 6, which is just 3 square roots of 6. 3 times the square root of 2 is minus 3 square roots of 2. And then I have the square root of 8 times the square root of 6. Now here's where you're going to be able to simplify the inside. So if you look, 6 times 8 or 8 times 6. Okay, it's going to be 48, but I'm going to have a perfect square in there, so be careful on that one. We'll sh I'll show you what to do in a minute. Then I have the square root of 8 mi or minus the square root of 8 times 2, which is the square root of 16, which is 4. Okay, I can go ahead and multiply what's inside, because remember, you can move them from the outside to the inside as, as you need to, as long as they're underneath the same root. And on the bottom, I have the first and the last, so I have the square root of 6 squared, or the square root of 36, because 6 times 6 is 36, which is the same thing as the square root of 6 squared, minus the square root of 2 squared, or the square root of 4. Same thing. So on the bottom, I'm just going to cancel these out, and I have 4 minus 2, or I'm sorry, 6 minus 2, which is 4. On the bottom, I have 4. And on the top, and here's where you have to be kind of good at what you're doing. Remember, you can only combine things that are alike, but you have to simplify. So on a sidebar, I'm going to simplify this. So 6 and 8 gives me 48. Well, 48 is also 16 times 3. Why would I want to write it like that? Because 16 is a perfect square. So that gives me the square root of 16 times the square root of 3, which is 4 square roots of 3. So right there, instead of 6, uh, the square root of 48, I'm going to put in 4 square roots of 3. Ah, not like that. It's 4 square roots of 3, not square root of 4. Okay, and then this is still 3 square roots of 6. This is still minus 3 square roots of 2. I can't simplify that. And then plus 4 square roots of 3 because we just did that right here, over here. And then minus the square root of 16. What is the square root of 16? 4. Now look at your numerator. Are any of these like terms? The square root of 6, square root of 2, and square root of 3? No, so I can't combine them. So that's your final answer. Okay? We don't have any radicals in the denominator, but I can't combine anything on the top. On your test, you will be able to combine like terms on the top. So make sure you simplify and then combine things that are alike. If you want to know what I mean, if you have 3 square roots of 2 plus 4 square roots of 2, that would be 7 square roots of 2. Okay, so just know that that's a sidebar. I shouldn't really circle that, but that's just a sidebar okay, or a note to yourself. Okay. Now, last question on the review. Anything to the zero power is always just one. Okay, anything to the zero power is one. And since all of this is to the zero power, my answer is just one.